Hey there planners, today I am giving an update on my planning system. It has been a few months since we leapt into 2024 and for me, some things have changed in my planner system. So I'm gonna walk through those changes today. Go grab your planners and let's get planning. All right, there's just something about the spring time frame, which for me occurs that spring feeling occurs right around early March where I get antsy in my planning system. And this is part of the reason why I purposely take a look at my planning system as a whole every quarter because things change, my activities in my life change and the needs of my planner system change about every quarter. So here we are right at the beginning of the month of March and I have made some changes in my planner system. I'm gonna be giving an update on that today. But before I dive right in, I do wanna say welcome to those of you who are new to Planning Annie. We are super excited to have you here on the channel with us. Here at Planning Annie, we are planner enthusiasts. We love our planner systems. We love being productive. We love getting things done. We love sharing ideas for how to manage all the different aspects of our life with each other. We also love all of the stationery and supplies and journaling and creative outlets that using a planner and a journal also provide. So if that sounds like something you enjoy, we do hope you'll consider subscribing, become a part of our community, hop down in the comments below and join the discussion. There's always good discussion going on there. Ask questions, offer your perspectives and answers uh, down in the comments. For those of you returning, welcome back. I'm excited to dive into what's changing. I do have a stack here. There are some things that are the same. There are some things that are different. So I'm gonna slide this out of the way and just start with what's not changing before I get into what's changing. All right, so I'm gonna start with these two. These two are not changing. This one has actually been around since the beginning of the year and it is really the only planner that is not changing. And this one I recently introduced as a work bullet journal and this one is not changing. I'll start with this one, which is a Hobonichi cousin. I am using this for my spiritual journaling this year. I have many videos about how I set this up and how I'm using it and how I'm using each section, but this is my faith journal for all of my scripture studies and um, gratitude and um, a little bit of memory keeping. And so if you would like to see more details about how I'm using this, definitely go check out the videos in the description box. I love this. It's working perfectly. I'm not changing anything about this. This is the only planner that I feel extremely settled in right now. So definitely not making any changes here. I recently set up a work bullet journal here in this notebook and it's B5 Scribbles That Matter notebook. I'm actually really loving this. This has been such a great shift for me. I felt like I needed to get my arms around my work a little better. I felt like I needed to have more hands-on interaction with due dates and um, sort of strategic thinking and project management and all of that. And this has been the answer that I needed so far. It is working really well. I'm going to continue to use this. I'm not going to do a flip through today just because there's a lot of personal stuff in my work bullet journal and um, I need to do a little bit of like covering things up in order to share this. Plus I want to get a few more weeks in it uh, before I come back to you with a true flip through. But right now this is working great. I do have the setup of this where I talk about sections and how I'm using it and some of the key strategies um, for actually moving back into pay Paper. Um, and so I'll have that video listed down below. Go check that out. So these two are working great and I'm going to continue right on using them the way I have described in previous videos. All right, next up is this guy. This is a personal size Moterm ring planner that I am currently using for a wallet. I did a video recently where I showed you how I was test driving this to see if this is something that might work for me. I started out the year in a Hobonichi Weeks as my wallet. I love the cover, it was beautiful. I thought it was gonna work, it wasn't working at all. Um, those weekly pages were just killing me because I don't need weekly pages in my wallet and leaving them blank was just really making me uncomfortable. <laughs> so I did some test driving. I love this. And so I went ahead and fully set it up with all of my inserts, my tabs, um, really 
starting to use it and I'm gonna have a full flip through of how I'm using this planner coming up very soon so make sure you're subscribed this is a really fun really beautiful planner and I had a lot of fun setting it up and getting all the inserts uh, ready to go in here so this is a little tease of what it looks like um, but definitely stay stay tuned for a full flip through and description of this planner and it's going really well I'm loving this planner right now all right, so I started out the year in this beauty. This is an A5 Stology that I set up to be my main everyday carry planner um, to have all the things in and I have lots of setup videos and flip throughs and discussions and weekly planning, all of that stuff in this planner. It has gone great. However, I got, I don't even know why, I got a little, like in a rut with this planner <laughs> and just felt like I needed to do something differently. And then these two folks entered the picture. So this is where I'm in the most churn right now and I'm not really sure what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about these two separately. I'll start with this one. This is a little baby A6. Um, this planner is actually called Ox Knight is the brand. It's brand new. I found it on Amazon. It was a really great price. It feels and looks a lot like Moterm planner covers. Um, it is a notebook cover. And I have set this up with an A6 size Stology. So A6. Um, it's tiny. I, I have been in an A5. So you can see... <laughs> you know, the size difference here. I'm not really sure what had me thinking or drawn to an A6 other than I just felt like I needed to go a little smaller and maybe a bit more informal. Um, I had, you know, a lot of weekly setups, daily pages, monthly pages, and I just kind of wanted to make scribbly notes. And so I set this planner up I absolutely love this cover. It's got the big back pocket. You know, it's just, it's very, very similar to Moterm uh, covers. And, um, but it was a better price. And I had not ever tried this brand before. I'll have it linked down below if you're interested in trying it. But I've got just a few things in the sides here, just a few cards. Um, these little die cuts are from Personalize My Planner, which I absolutely love. They have fantastic Bible study stickers and faith stickers, which are really hard to find. So I'll have that list listed down below. Um, so I've just got a few things here. I did put this um, A6 Stology in a clear cover. And then I just printed this on sticker paper, this image on sticker paper, which I got from Canva, and just stuck it right on um, right on the, the front cover of the Stology. Um, I've got some sticky pockets. These are clear sticky pockets that, um, that you can get off Amazon. I actually made this, <laughs> I made this years ago, uh, just using some watercolor, a cute little bunny, it says hop on it. I think he's so adorable and I love to pull him out every, um, every spring as Easter is approaching. This is a little card that came with a Virgo and paper order. And then this also is a Virgo and paper sticker. And I just, you can see the hydrangeas in the background. This is another image printed on sticker paper that I just stuck down. So um, you can tell I'm all about the spring vibes. <laughs> and this is part of the reason why I'm motivated every spring to change it up a little bit because all those spring vibes, I am longing for spring. All right, so this was a freebie printable from Coffee Monster Co. You can get that on the Coffee Monster Co. Facebook group. This is a year at a glance from Hourglass Planner uh, on Etsy um, that I just printed out, shrunk down to size and printed out for A6. And then I went through and put in a future log using the freebie calendars from the Coffee Monster Co. Facebook group. And I had also ordered the, the stickers, um, the monthly flower stickers for this year. So what I did is I just put the freebie printable, I printed it on sticker paper, stuck it down here, and then just started making a list. And I've done that for each month. So I've got sort of a future log and a calendar um, and a place just to list out things that are going on. I'm not listing things in order. So as I learn about them, I just go ahead and add the next number. That kind of bothers me, but not too much. Um, I did a place for goals and my word of the year. Um, I did a place for a wish list. 
Um, I've got some uh, baby shower stuff that I'm tracking, throwing a baby shower. I've got some lists that I want to make, and then it's just blank. So right now I'm just kind of using this to write things down um, as they come. I'm not doing a lot of planning in here, but I'm not sure I might do some planning in here, like some daily planning or some daily list. You know, Stologies have a lot of paper. I did do a grid spacing cheat sheet back here, um, but that's really it. That The rest of it is just blank, and I'm not really 100% sure how I'm going to use this, but I do know that it's super cute. It's super small. It's got enough pockets for me to do some, you know, some other things in. Look, here's another one of those die cuts from Personalize My Planner. So adorable. This came in a Coffee Monster Co. subscription kit. And then I made this myself in Canva, this little sticker here. But it's got plenty of pockets and things. I could try to use it as a wallet, but I really like my wallet right now. So honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing with this. And just... I just like having it. <laughs> I like having it available to be able to grab. I do have this little um, Uni One pen. These are so adorable. The size is so cute. It's perfect for spring. It's perfect for this little um, clip here. So anyway, I'm not quite sure how I'm using this. I'm going to have to come back at another time and tell you guys, you know, what I end up doing with this. But right now, it's just a little baby notebook that... I can grab and write some things down when I need to. All right, and then that leaves this guy, which I'm actually gonna walk through. So if you've ever been down in the bowels of the Planning Annie channel and video list, and you go way back, like way back to the cringy first videos, you will find some good old fashioned bullet journal videos. And that's because way back, way, way back, I actually started really, really with my planner journey in bullet journaling space. And I don't know if I saw a video. I don't know if it's because I was flipping through old planners, but I don't know if it's because I saw this beautiful notebook on Amazon. I mean, this thing is absolutely gorgeous and it just screams spring. It's 160 GSM paper. It's A5 size. It's got 200 sheets or around like maybe 192, something like that sheets of paper. And it is really beautiful. Those dragonflies, like just absolutely gorgeous. Some combination of those triggering factors had me think, maybe I want to go back to bullet journaling. I don't know. Bullet journaling can be, depending on how you implement it, it can be a lot of work. Um, it can be a lot of setup and, you, you know, I, in actuality, what I'm doing in my A5 Stologies, it's very much like bullet journaling. I'm taking a blank notebook, I'm turning it into what I want, I'm using daily logs and action trackers and monthly, month at a glance, all of that stuff. I do incorporate more stickers, um, things like that, more color, but at, it, at its heart, my planning style is very much rooted in bullet journal method. And so I just got this notebook and I just kind of started and I'm not really sure where this is going. So I'll warn you as I get ready to flip through, this thing is kind of a hot mess right now. And I am comfortable with that. I'm okay with this being a hot mess right now because I feel like I am working my way out of a place where I don't quite know what I need to a place where I know I'm trusting the process. I will eventually end up with, you know, a tool that I can use. So the way this notebook is set up, it's got your key in the front and many index pages. I haven't quite used these yet, but I would like to. It came with a sticker sheet. And so you can see like some of these items, the here, 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 um, some of these items are stickers. Some of these items I drew in myself, like this dragonfly and this flower, this flower. I drew them in myself, but I just wanted, you know, a good old fashioned traditional bullet journal cover page. And I was watching some movies. It was a cold, you know, February evening. And I just kind of started doodling and, you know, using some of my markers. That's the other thing. I have this call to use my supplies. And, and I don't know if it's like, the creative side is sort of like busting at the seams and wanting to get out. I'm not sure what the driver was, but I'm going with it. I'm going with it and trusting the process. So cover page. I even did 
the good old fashioned year at a glance that I drew by hand. Oh, I don't know why, why I love this, but I actually did the draw by hand and you can see the white out, right? Cause inevitably you mess up on these things. But I actually did the draw by hand year at a glance on the, you know, the doc grid paper, the, the old school bullet journal setup. Um, I did a list of holidays here and I had so much fun. I had so much fun setting this up because I kind of treated it like, yeah, if I end up using this notebook, I do. If I don't, I don't. And like, took all the pressure off and just allowed myself to be creative. So really enjoyed setting this up. I did a future log here. Um, and you know, it's very duplicative of what I have in here, right? I've got a future log in here. The exact same things are listed here. I just kind of wanted to flex a muscle and, you know, do some creative things, set it up and see if I wanted to use it. So I've got a future log here. I've got a, um, sort of a collage of my family and my vision board. Um, I love these pages. I make these in Canva, print them out to the size that I want to on sticker paper and then cut them out and put them in. And I added a few stickers um, around the edges. But, um, you know, this is my, this is sort of my vision board for the year. I did a goals section. I'm using some new tools that I got, which stay tuned, I'm gonna have a, a new spring tools video coming up. Um, and some of the stickers that came with this notebook, some of the washi tape, you know, just my word of the year, my goals. I went ahead and put those in here. Um, I did my reoccurring task list and my trigger list. These two lists I use in every planner, everything, you know, everything I'm going to use for planning. I always have these, uh, right at hand, um, to be able to reference. So, and then I just decided, let me just back plan a little bit. And um, if you're not familiar with that term back plan, that just means I'm going to go back and put information in this planner that has already occurred so that it is kind of a single record so that it has the full year. So I went back, did a little doodle um, for January, threw in the calendar, plugged in my goals, you know, this month to do items, things that happened, very basic. Um, you know, this isn't not really fancy, pretty basic, a little doodles with the snowman for January and, you know, just kind of captured that. And then I decided to do the same thing for February, even though I was at the end of February, I just did a little doodle for February and then drew in the calendar, added in the goals, you know, um, I was using markers. I was, you know, drawing a little bit, right? And so getting a little creative kind of exercising that muscle, which I haven't done in a really long time in my planner system. I use stickers a lot. I use printables a lot, but to actually draw things in, this paper is absolutely glorious on this, uh, in this notebook, it's 160 GSM. So you'll see in a minute, I got, I went like to the far extreme of creativity and planning. Um, and it really had fun with this. I did um, set up the meal plan page, just kind of playing around with that. How would I want to set it up? I pulled over all my brain dump triggers and sort of plugged them in. Again, I was not doing this at the beginning of the month. I was doing this retroactively. So just pulling things in that had already happened. Um, and then I just played around and set up a week and said, okay, what would a week look like? And um, just kind of playing around with different layout, you know, tracking list. How would I capture everything on a, a bullet journal weekly page? You know, a thing that I drew in myself. I drew in the little calendar. I did use some stickers here. Um, there are some stickers here, but most of this is hand drawn. So after a week of playing around in this, I thought, mm, this is kind of fun. Okay, let me keep going. And then I got out the watercolors. <laughs> So I loved in the past, I, I love to watercolor. It's just something that I don't get to do very often. And I just decided to let it go and have a lot of fun with the watercolors. So I set up the month of March using my watercolor palette and um, sort of a theme, I guess you could call it, of pastels and flowers and um, just having fun with the watercolors. And you can see I'm not using like, really advanced artistic techniques here. <laughs> I did a little watercolor blob and then I drew in some flower doodles, right? So I, this is not like, you know, revolutionary artwork here. This is 
just playing around, just really playing around and, and exercising my creative muscle. Um, then I did the monthly calendar. And for this page, I just did a big wash of, you know, different color, pastel, watercolors all over the page. And then I drew in the calendar and started plugging things in. Um, we have a lot going on this month. We're really, really busy as a family. So, you know, I started plugging things in. I did use like these weekdays are stickers. This is a sticker. I did use some stickers, but a lot of it is also drawn in. Um, I did the meal plan. I used watercolor for this. I did the brain dump page. I used watercolor as a background. And you can see the pages are kind of crinkly and, you know, um, obviously have been wet. I actually love that. I think it's awesome. They still lay flat. You can see it's a very nice lay flat notebook and the pages, I'm still able to write on them. They look great. So the notebook quality, I'm super impressed with. Okay, this set of pages between here, I've got some, you know, private information on. I just watercolored a background on them and I'm planning, planning something for a family member that I'm gonna keep private, but it's on those pages. Then I did an Easter spread because March, is the month that Easter is in, which is very early. You, usually it's in April, it feels very early. So I wanted to have a place to do some Easter planning. Um, and you can see, I just kind of played around with egg shapes and designs down here. I mean, again, <laughs> I don't know that I would frame this. <laughs> I, and I feel like it's kind of messy and like a, a little bit ugly but I also really enjoyed doing it and um, it feels very personalized and I, you know, I enjoy coming to this page. So, and that's kind of how I feel about, this is, you know, a week that I've completed the first, last week of February leading into the first week of March and I just started planning in it and I've had so much fun. It's messy. I just did the watercolor as the background and then, you know, started drawing things in and you can see I've set up other weeks um, as well, I went ahead and set up all the weeks of, um, of M March and using different formats and different styles of trackers, different colors, all with elements of watercolor in them. These, I mean, again, not, this is not, in my mind, this is kind of messy, <laughs> a little bit cluttered, a little bit messy um, artwork, but really really fun just pen and watercolor down here at the bottom and some you know some doodly flowers um and i just really had fun with the watercolors and then here's the last week of march so i don't know that i would have the energy or the stamina to do this level of like painting and then waiting it for it to dry and drawing things in every every month. I don't know if I'll do that. However, I will say it just took me one day to set all this up and not, not like a whole day. I mean, like a couple of hours to set this up, but I had so much fun. It was so rejuvenating to kind of be creative and um, spend that time, almost like self-care time, just spend that time sort of setting things up for me. And I feel very drawn to use these pages uh, now that this is all set up like this. So I'm excited. I'm excited to keep going with this and see what happens. After that, I've got like a packing list and, um, you know, a place to put some notes for an upcoming event. Um, I've got uh, ideas for the planning and a channel for this month and things I need to do there. I've got, um, I have been having to do some vacation planning for a summer vacation for the family and I needed a place to capture notes and ideas and research and you know information about the Verbo and all of that stuff. So I've got that here. Um, I've got my reading list listed out here. This is my big old fat productivity, you know, self-study reading list. It's actually grown <laughs> since last year. I have already checked off some, uh, but I've got more to do. Um, and if you're interested in seeing this, I know sometimes you guys want to see what is it that I'm reading. You can take a screenshot there. And if you have any questions about it, let me know. But um, I love to read and study different ways of thinking about productivity and time management and, you know, getting things done and success and all of that stuff so that's what this is this is my reading list and then the rest is just blank pages so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to be using this going forward but I had a lot of fun setting it up and it's 
you know, it's bringing me back to some nostalgia of, um, of being creative and being messy. I probably will not next month go this creative or maybe I will, I'm not sure. Um, maybe I'll use stickers, maybe I won't. I just know that I, um, I have thoroughly enjoyed using this and playing around with it and the freedom that I gave myself to just have fun. And if I don't end up using it, you know, I can, I can use this, I can go back to this. Like I have tools that I can use, but to just kind of play around and not be so concerned about being perfectionist in here. So that's where I am. That's where I am with all my planning tools. I, um, I really hope that you enjoy you know, kind of getting an update on where I am with my planning tools. And I'd love to hear from you. Are you having some changes in your planner lineup? Are you experimenting with new tools? Does spring make you a little itchy uh, in your current planner lineup? If so, let me know that down, uh, down below. Or if you are perfectly happy with what you started the year with, I'd also love to know that too, because that's nice to know that there are some folks out there like that. So give yourself the freedom to play around and experiment if that's what you're feeling like you need. That's what I've done and I'm really enjoying it. So if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to Planet Annie for more content like this. And as always, thanks for planning with me.